Chapter 14. Clarencio's Elucidations My heart was pounding, and I felt like a shy student about to face a strict examining board. Seeing that woman in tears and pondering the minister's serene strength, I felt an inner trembling and regretted having requested the hearing. Wouldn't it have been better to have kept quiet, to have simply waited for decisions to be made from higher up? Mightn't it be too presumptuous to apply for medical duty in a hospital where I myself was still a patient? Clarencio's frankness with the sister who preceded me awakened new thoughts in my mind. I wanted to give up, to renounce my aspirations of the previous day, and to run from my room. But that was impossible. As though he had guessed my innermost intentions, the minister of assistance spoke to me in a firm tone of voice. And what can I do for you? In spite of the indecision gripping me, I was instinctively going to request any medical job that might be available in Nasalar. But my conscience warned me. Why request one type of work in particular? Wouldn't that be displaying the human error of vanity, which wouldn't even consider a job that wasn't related to one's titles and academic degrees? These questions brought me to my senses just in time. Rather confused, I spoke. I took the liberty of coming here today to ask you to help me reintegrate into the work scene. Now that the generosity of Nasalar has returned me to the blessing of organic harmony, I miss my old obligations. I'm interested in any useful work whatsoever, as long as it keeps me from being idle. Florencio looked at me at length, as if guessing my hidden agenda. I see. You're telling me that any kind of job whatsoever will do. But deep down, you miss your clients, your office, and the whole atmosphere of service with which the Lord blessed you while on earth. Up to this point, his words were rays of comfort and hope, which I received in my heart with a confirming nod. After a longer pause, however, the minister proceeded. Nevertheless, you must realize that sometimes our Father honors us with his trust but then we alter the real purpose of the service he has entrusted to us. You are a medical student, surrounded by every resource available for your studies. You never knew the price of a single book, for your generous parents paid all of your expenses. You began to earn a lot of money right after your graduation, and were spared all the difficulties of a poor doctor, compelled to ask his friends for help in order to begin his practice. You prospered so rapidly that you transformed all those advantages into a career aimed at the premature death of your physical body. While young and strong, you committed many abuses while exercising the profession to which Jesus had led you. Before that firm yet kind gaze, a strange disturbance took hold of me. I said respectfully, Your remarks are absolutely correct, but if possible, I'd be grateful if you would grant me the means of repaying my debts by sincerely devoting myself to the patients in this hospital complex. A very noble impulse, said Clarencio, less austerely. Even so, you should remember that every task on earth involving a professional capacity is an invitation from our Father to enable human beings to enter the divine temple of service. For us, a degree is just a piece of paper. But on the physical plane, it usually means an open door to all sorts of abuse. With such a piece of paper, a person should be able to study and serve the Lord in his divine services on the planet. This principle applies to all earthly activities, regardless of the customs in the areas where they are carried out. My brother, you received a medical piece of paper and consequently entered the temple of medicine. However, your actions while there do not authorize my endorsing your present wishes. How could I, all of a sudden, transform you into a doctor of ill spirits when you used to limit your observations exclusively to the physical body? I do not deny your excellent abilities as a physiologist, but the field of life is much broader than that. What would you say of a botanist who based all his definitions on the mere examination of the dry bark of a few trees? 
On Earth, a great many physicians prefer only statistical conclusions with regard to anatomy. We agree that statistics is respectable, but it isn't the only science in the universe. As you know by now, doctors cannot stop at mere diagnoses and terminologies. They must penetrate the soul and probe its innermost depths. On the planet, many medical professionals are veritable prisoners of academia, and vanity has stolen the keys to their prison cells. Very few succeed in crossing the swamp of lower interests and overcoming common prejudices. The derision of the world and the scorn of their colleagues are reserved for such exceptions. I was amazed. I had never dreamed of such notions of professional responsibility. I was surprised by the interpretation of an academic degree reduced to a mere ticket of admission into areas of work in active cooperation with the Supreme Lord. Unable to argue, I waited for the Minister of Assistance to resume his explanation. As you can see, he continued, you are not adequately prepared for our services here. Generous benefactor, I dared to say, I understand the lesson and bow before the evidence. Making a great effort to hold back my tears, I stated humbly, I would still be willing to submit to any kind of work in this colony of accomplishment and peace. With a look of approval, he answered, My friend, I don't only offer you the bitter truth. I also have a word of encouragement. You cannot yet become a doctor in Nasalar, but in due time you will assume the role of an intern. Your present situation is not one of the best. Nevertheless, it is a more or less comfortable one, owing to the intercessions arriving at the Ministry of Assistance on your behalf. My mother? I asked, intoxicated with joy. Yes, explained the minister, your mother and a few other friends in whose hearts you planted the seed of sympathy. Soon after your arrival, I asked the Ministry of Elucidation to send me your records. I examined them closely and found much imprudence and thoughtlessness, numerous abuses. But during your 15 years of medical practice, you also provided free aid to 6,000 needy people. Most of the time, you practiced those meritorious acts condescendingly. However, you can see by now that even if done condescendingly, a good act spreads blessings along the way. Out of all those needy people, 15 never forgot about you, and they have made fervent appeals on your behalf. But I should add that even the good you did to the indifferent ones weighs in your favor. Concluding his surprising elucidations with a smile, Clarencio added, You will learn new lessons in Nasalar, and after useful experiences, you will be able to cooperate effectively with us and prepare yourself for the infinite future. I felt radiant. For the first time in the colony, I wept out of pure joy. Ah, how on earth could I understand such joy? Sometimes it is necessary to quiet our hearts before the magnificent divine silence.